great morning once again we are searching the scriptures we are going into the word of God and so I've been meditating on this particular scripture for a while and as we said before the Lord has commanded us to search the scriptures in them we think we have eternal life for they are they which do testify of him and in this season in time we need a word from the Lord uh, we thank God for all those who are praying uh, um, a woman of God, of Javonda, uh, I don't think she minds me mentioning her name. She's praying on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And she has an awesome way of uh, going into the scriptures. Uh, she's prayed uh, out of uh, Nahum, and it really was in line with what the Lord had given me to study. And so um, this uh, particular scripture is talking about the future. It's talking about um, what's coming in the body of Christ was coming into the world. And so uh, it's talking about the next generation. Um, I'm considered a baby boomer, born in 1951. And so uh, we have uh, generations after us. And so God has a word for the generation that's to come. And um, I believe that uh, if they take heed to the word, and even us who are baby boomers, uh, seasoned saints, uh, we can learn from this word to uh, there's so much in the scriptures that we can understand the mind of God, the heart of God, the uh, course in which God is moving. And so we give him glory, honor, and praise today. We're going to pray. Father, we give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise for this day which thou have made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Father, you have commanded us to search the scriptures, and we come this morning early to to seek you, Lord God, early, Lord God, hallelujah, to, to go into your word. We pray that you will guide us by thy Holy Spirit. You will show us things to come, that you will give us revelation, knowledge of thee. Hallelujah, for we yield our body, our mind, and our soul unto you, Lord God. We thank you for the word, which is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We pray that you will be glorified in us, Lord God, and that you continue to open up our understanding, Lord God, for we yield our vessel to you. In Jesus' name, amen. So we give God the glory, the honor, and the praise. And so we're going to be going into Zechariah. We're going to be going into Isaiah, Jeremiah, Deuteronomy. And so what I have been studying is out of Zechariah, the first chapter, something stood out to me in the first chapter. And so we're just going to start reading that at the first chapter, verse 2. And it says, The Lord has been so displeased with your fathers. And I would say that would be our ancestors. We hear a lot of people now talking about ancestry. You know, um, the, as a black race, we hear the ancestors coming out of Africa. And, and we have uh, uh, the Confederates talking about the ancestors. And I think that President Trump is getting ready to make some kind of memorial to the ancestors. And so it says here, the Lord has been so displeased with your fathers. And we can put the word ancestors in there. Therefore, say... Thou unto them, thus says the Lord of hosts, turn ye unto me, says the Lord of hosts, and I will turn unto you, says the Lord of hosts. Be ye not as your fathers unto whom the former prophets have cried, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, turn ye now from your evil ways, from your evil doings, hallelujah, but they did not hear, nor hearken unto me, says the Lord. You know, you look at the condition that we are in today, many times we can say we're not, we didn't just happen here and get to this place in America. We didn't get to this place in our families. Some of the foundations that we are experiencing or the things that we are experiencing were done by our ancestors. You know, uh, we got a lot of generational strongholds that may have been laid down by the enemy in, in the lives of our ancestors. And so... Even in this country, America, there has been some, some actual uh, um, evil, evil ways, he says, some evil ways. And God said he has been so displeased with them. You know, a lot of times it talks about um, we reaping what we sow. When we look at our own families, I, I remember when I first got saved, I got down and started praying, Lord, for, for generational strongholds and for generational curses that was on my family. 
you know, the background and the, and the, and the report that came, what uh, happened in my family, how, how we were conceived, all these things in light of God's word lets us know that God said, I am so displeased. I am unhappy. I am not happy at all with what man is doing. It says here, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Turn ye now from your evil ways, from your evil doings. But your fathers did not hear, and they did not hearken. Some even now, they're trying to celebrate some of the evil or some of the things that these four, five, you know, uh, uh, parents did. Some of these four fathers, some of these four leaders did. They're trying to pull that stuff back up. They're trying to glorify it. When God says, hallelujah, he is displeased. Now, if God is not happy, nobody's going to be happy. Even though he may have delayed his judgment. But I do believe this season and time with the pandemic, the COVID-19, the heat index that's going on. So many nations, uh, uh, parts of this country is under extreme heat. Uh, when you have extreme heat, you're going to have a lot of things happen when it comes to crops. It comes to fruit being be, uh, bearing. A lot of things is going to happen. I was talking to my young son. He was saying, well, there's not going to be no famine. I believe, hallelujah, that God is going to allow some extreme things. When he said, I'm so displeased, he's going to bring forth some extreme things. In fact, he's going to bring forth some strange things. This is what he says. He says, be ye not as your fathers unto whom the former prophets have cried, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Turn ye now from your evil ways, from your evil doings, but they did not. Hearken unto me, saith the Lord. Your fathers, he's asking us now, or our generation that's coming, where are they? Where are those forefathers that you are now picking up, making statues, making the memorial to them? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where are they, he says. Where are they? Are they in the earth? Uh -huh. you giving them glory. you giving them honor. you giving them praise. But where are they? He says, and the prophets, and do they live forever? So the people that you are touting, your forefathers, and, your, and, and all of their glory that they were in, and even those who gave you work, where are they, God said? Where are they? He said, but my words and my statutes, which I commanded my servants, the prophets, did they not take hold of your fathers? He said, now what I'm saying, what he's saying here in verse 6 of Zechariah, the first chapter. His words and his statutes, which he spoke against anybody, any word that he spoke against any flesh, anybody who's in this world. God said, my word and my statutes, did they not take hold of them? Did they not take hold of them? Now, what did God speak? You go to Deuteronomy. We're going to go to Deuteronomy. Remember, we want to finish this here, first part here. He says, my words and my statutes, which I commanded my servants, the prophets, did they not take hold of your fathers? Your fathers and your ancestors and all these people, they did not get away. Hallelujah. From my word being fulfilled in their lives. It says, and they returned, he said. And said, now he's telling Israel, I spoke against your ancestors and I spoke against your forefathers and they returned. And when they returned, they said, like as the Lord of hosts thought to do unto us, according to our ways and according to our doings, so has he dealt with us. So in other words, they came back to testify through either through the word. They came back to say what God said he was going to do is exactly what God did. And so we're going to see, going over to Deuteronomy, what did God say to Israel? Now, we talked before about God judging Israel. And when God sent the word out, Israel was an example. But we're going to Deuteronomy 28. Everybody know this scripture. You study your Bible. The blessings and the curses. We always say we want the blessings, the blessed when I'm going out, the blessed when I come in. But there is a word out there. Hallelujah. And that word will find us out. It will find us out. In fact, Numbers tells us, the 23rd chapter, God is not a man that he shall lie. Neither is he the son of man that he shall repent. God has said it. 
And he's going to come to pass. Now, Jude, Deuteronomy 28, verses 15, hallelujah, going down to verses 46. It's a little lengthy, but we're going to read a little bit of it. Praise God. And because God is talking to this generation, but it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe all to do his commandments and his statutes. He just told you over there, my statutes are going to find you out. Which I commanded thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Curses shall I be in the city. Curses shall I be in the field. Curses shall I be in the basket. Curses shall I be. And it goes on down. It says, verse 22, the Lord shall smite thee with consumption. Consumption. I talked about that in one of the other things. The consumption is what we having now. This plague, like typhoid fever, this cons this this con this uh pandemic COVID nineteen is a consumption with a fever. Hallelujah. We think it's going away. It's, we think it's going away, but it ain't going away because God is doing something in this nation. God is doing something in this world. His word has gone out of his mouth. Hallelujah. It says, hallelujah. When God says something, Isaiah 66, 9 says, shall I, uh, and we, we, we go on to say, Isaiah 66, 9 says, shall I bring to the birth and not cause to bring forth, saith the Lord? Shall I cause to bring forth and shall I shut up the womb? When God says, I am going to do a new thing. I am going to do a new thing. I am going, when he talk about old things passing away, behold, all things become new again. Do, do, is God working in vain? Is God word in vain? It's not in vain. He goes on to say, the Lord shall smite thee with a consumption, with a fever, with inf inflammation. Hallelujah. It goes on to say, the Lord will smite thee with the blotch of Egypt. The Lord will smite thee with madness. If we ain't in a time of madness, from the White House all the way down, hallelujah, the people act like they don't have any common sense. No common sense. Where is the common sense? Things that don't even make sense. Hallelujah. It says, I will smite thee with mad madness and blindness and astonishment of heart. This blindness be, you can say it right in front of you, you can't see it. You can't see your way. You can't, you don't know which way you're going. Hallelujah. This is a, the curse of God, not only upon Israel, but upon all. He's begins to say, moreover, all these shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee. And this is going all the way down to verse 45. Moreover, all these curses, if you read all of them, shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed because thou hearken not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and a wonder and upon thy seed. So upon thy seed is the next generation after those ancestors, after those ones that people are making statues and they making memorial. Dumb things that them forefathers did is coming upon their seed. Hallelujah. It's coming upon their seed. People don't realize they are generational curses. They are generational curses. And that's why you have to go to Christ for yourself. You have to go to God and say, Lord, Make me over again. Make me new again. Make me, hallelujah, a new creature so that all things are passed away. Behold, all things become new again. It's time some of our children are reaping generational curses. It says they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed because thou Serveth not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and gladness of heart for the abundance of all these things. Hallelujah. Because of all these things, therefore shalt thou serve thy enemy. So because of you did not serve the God with joy. Now, when you look at these answers in this country right here, you got one race of people talking about, we want to remember our ancestors and how they did. Look at what they did. Look what they did. Even we talk about Africa. Africa served many gods. They did not serve the living God. Even in this time now, hallelujah, the gospel being brought over to Africa. When you look at the gospel being brought over to Africa, hallelujah, you see 
all the religions, you see Islam is coming in and the Christianity is going, is going through persecution. So now you say, well, there's our right to choose the God. How about Shunda? Yes, it's a right. But when you don't choose the living God, the true and living God, God's words that's come out of his mouth, they shall not return unto him void. We say shall not. So we see here, he said, it's going to come upon as a sign. It's going to come as a wonder upon thy seas. And we are in the time of signs and wonders. Hallelujah. And there ain't no good signs and there ain't no good wonders either. So we're going back to Zechariah. And I was talking the other day in the tape about the, the carpenters. So we're going to go down because it, Zechariah tells you a little bit about the, the revelation that God gave. And the uh, Zechariah talks, starts to talk about the Gentile um, nations. And as a woman of God was praying the other day, she read out of Nahum before we go over to that, uh, of the Gentile nation. She began to talk about the Assyrians and how the Assyrians had come up against um, Egypt and God had said to them that he was going to um, avenge them. He said, he, he said, the Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust in him. God knows those that are his. God knows how to deliver his people out of trouble. God knows what to do. He, and she began to say, God said, what the enemy has done to you is not going to come upon you the second time. Hallelujah. But we see here, God is getting ready to judge the nations. God is beginning. You cannot persuade me that God's hand and his word is not coming to pass upon all nations. He talked the other day about Jeremiah. He said to the Jeremiah, speak to the nation. Jeremiah didn't just speak to Israel. Jeremiah said to the nations. In fact, he told them, tell them they're going to drink from the cup. And if they say they're not going to drink from the cup, Jeremiah, tell them they're going to drink. And this is what God said. The nations, it's going to come upon you and your children, what you did not do in serving God and serving sin, look at the, the sin becoming ripe. It's ripening. Oh, yeah, Boshanda. Getting ready for the Antichrist. So we're going back to Zephaniah. This is going to be a little long take, but I pray that you're patient and you go with me in this word. It says, but my word and my steps, which I commanded my servants, the prophet, did they not take heed? Of your fathers, they returned, he said, like and said, like as the Lord of hosts thought to do unto us, according to his our ways and according to our doing, so he has dealt with us. This is a testimony from the past to the future, children. As God said he was gonna do, he has done it. They like what he said, Where are they? Where are your fathers? Are they alive today? He done cut them down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then it goes on to say, we're still in Zech, uh, uh, Zechariah. As they begin to talk about, um, God begin to show a vision of a red horseman. Now the horseman in Revelation, we see the horseman rider. First it's the white horse. And then you see, you see the red horse. You saw the speckled horse. You saw the black horse. You see these horses riding. But it talks about here, about the red horse and the speckled horse and the white horse. So this takes us to Revelation. Hallelujah. But as we go down the seat in Zechariah, hallelujah, the 12th verse, it says, The angel of the Lord answered and said, O Lord host, how long will thou have mercy? How long will you not have mercy upon Jerusalem and upon the cities of Judah against whom thou hast had indignation these 70 years? The 70 years, hallelujah, which Daniel was taken into captivity under the Babylonian reign. See, when people think God is not moving in nations, God is moving in nations too. The Assyrians came up against Israel. God allowed the Babylonians to come up against the Assyrians. That's what Nahum was, was prophesying about. So we see Zechariah, here the question is being asked, Lord, how long? How long, O Lord, wilt thou have not have mercy on Jerusalem. So God sends a word to the children of Israel who are now the prophetic word that you will be in captivity for 70 years. For 70 years. God got a timetable and the timetable of God 
hallelujah, is coming to pass. How long? He began to say, and that what we find here, hallelujah, when they asked the question, he, they began to say the question in Zechariah 1, O Lord of hosts, how long wilt thou not have mercy on Jerusalem and on the city of Judah and against which thou hast had indignation these 70 years? Or he says three score and ten years. And the Lord had, and answered the angel that talked with me with good words and comfortable words. God said, listen, I had a time frame for Israel to suffer. Hallelujah. And they have suffered. They have suffered my indignation. They have suffered my, my, my punishment. They have suffered. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And they didn't only suffer for 70 years. The, the finishment of the finished time of their suffering. In fact, Daniel said in the 69th week that the Messiah would come, but he would be cut off, not for himself. And so in the 69th week of the 70th year prophecy against Israel, Christ came. Oh, yeah, Boshina. But we know when Christ came, praise God, Israel did not receive him as a nation. So she still had time to fulfill that prophecy of the 70th week. And so when Jesus departed from Jerusalem, he said he wept for her because they did not know the time of their visitation. But when Christ left and weeped over Jerusalem, after that, he died in A.D. 30, 32, 33, it's around that time. But right after that, in 70 A.D., Jerusalem was destroyed, and the prophecy of Jesus said not one stone would be left unturned. Jew, Jerusalem, would came, the, the Romans came. Now the Romans, hallelujah, came and destroyed Jerusalem to the point where Josephus said they was locked up and hemmed up inside the walls of Jerusalem for so many days that they began to become cannibals. You don't tell me that God, when he talks about he hates sin, he hates sin, he hates sin, but he's given us a way, that we might be saved, and that is through Christ. Christ in the gospel is now preached to the Gentile, but the scripture declare there the time of the Gentiles will close. And one of the prophecies says that when God began to gather Israel from the four corners of the earth, we need to wake up. We need to wake up because God is getting ready to deal with the Gentile nations and that indignation and them curses in Jude Deuteronomy. Bible Sunday was not just for Israel. It was for all flesh. But God tells them in Zechariah, he asks, how long? How long? But then you go over to Jeremiah, and God begins to send a word of comfort to them. Jeremiah, the 30th chapter, verses 11. For he says to Israel, for I am with thee, says the Lord of hosts, to save thee. Though I made a full end of all nations, whether I have scattered thee, yet though I make... A full end of all nations where I have scattered thee. Israel was scattered to the four corners in every single nation. If you study the Holocaust, nobody wanted to take them people in. And I know we as black people say, well, uh, Mother Allen, we went through some stuff too. Yes. You know why we went through some stuff? Because Africa was in idolatry. <laughs> the wages of sin is death. But I do believe that ones that he allowed to come over to this nation, we was rescued. It may be a hard thing to think like he did with the children of Israel and put them in Babylon. Put them in Babylon. Put them in Egypt. He told hardly about Abraham that your seed shall be down in Egypt. And they went in as 70 and came out as a multitude. Hardly even Joseph said, when you, when you come out, bring my bones out with you. So we who came up out of Africa, we came into a country. Yes, we came in in shackles. Hallelujah. But God set us free. And this is 400 years now after that time. God's timetable for this nation and the timetation for us as black people is turning. But we have to turn to God. He begins to say to Israel, we're going back to Jeremiah. I pray that you're following me. Jeremiah 30 verse 11. 
For I am with thee, saith the Lord of hosts, to save thee, though I make a full end of all nations where I have scattered thee. Yet will I not, not make a full end of thee, but I will correct thee in measure, and will not leave thee altogether unpunished. That's what he's telling Israel. I'm going to make a full end of all the nations, but I'm not going to leave you, Israel, without some chastisement. He didn't. They went into the fiery furnace. Them people went into, I looked at the Holocaust, in the same thing as be who he came over here as slaves. Babies. Babies. I'm like, God, these are babies. What did they do? They just, remember he said on the, the scripture, the judgment going to fall upon your seed. So when you see the children suffering, it's the punishment that was put on. Now, how can we escape that? If any man be in Christ, hallelujah, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. So in order for our children and our children's children to be blessed, it's time for us, the older ones, the ones current. Now, if you don't want your children to come up underneath the, the judgment of God, the indignation of God, the punishment of God, you need to cry loud and call out to God for your children. Because the word is already out there. How yeah, Boshunda? It says, the Lord, the Lord has sent his word, and it shall not return unto him void. Let's go on and read. We in Jeremiah, we're just coming back from Zechariah, but we're going back and forth in the scripture. For thus saith the Lord, her, thy bruises is incurable, and thy wound is grievous. There is none to plead thy cause, that thou mayest be bound up. Thou hast no healing medicine. All thy love. So he's telling Israel this. There ain't nobody can heal you. When I put this, what I put on you, and the same thing with this nation, and the same thing with this world. What God put on you, I don't care what your science, I don't care what your philosophy, hallelujah, ain't none of it can take this, can, can heal you, he said. All thy lovers have forgotten thee, and they seek thee not. For I have wounded thee with the wound of an enemy, with the chastisement of a cruel one, for the multitude of thy iniquity, because thy sin were Increase. This is what he did to Israel. My God. Hallelujah. We're going to read a little bit more. For thus says the Lord, Behold, I will bring again the captivity. So now he goes on. He says, He gives them a word of comfort. Hallelujah. He began to say, When you when they cried for their affliction, their sorrow is incurable for the multitude of thy iniquity, because thy sin is increased. I have done these things to thee. Because of your sin, I have done these things to thee. Now you tell me America is not going to get it. You tell me even in my family. Hallelujah. Because you look back at ancestors. They glorify these ancestors. It's going to bring the wrath and the judgment of God. He said because of these things, your sins have increased. I've done these things. The consumption, the fever, the plagues, the dryness. When you read it, Deuteronomy, I'm going to dry up the earth. I'm going to cause it, hallelujah, uh, 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 over your head it's going to be dry. And your land going to be dry. He's talking about some hard times. Some hard times. Hallelujah. But then God comforts Israel in Jeremiah. Hallelujah. Therefore all they that devour thee shall be devoured. And all thy adversaries, every one of them shall go into captivity. And they shall... They that spoil thee shall be spoiled, and all that pray upon thee will I give for a prey. That's to every nation that thought we can pick Israel apart like a piece of meat. He said, those that pray upon you, I'm going to pray upon you. You think that word is not coming to pass on America? In the time when, when their people was fleeing from boat to boat to boat, even our people now trying to get to, to a place of safety, they're turning them back, turning them back, closing the door. No compassion. No compassion. I know it's saying, well, we want to make America great again. What you are saying is that they said, the bricks has fallen and we shall rebuild. That's a prophecy about when the people said, the bricks had fallen and we shall rebuild. President uh, Obama cited that. Out of the scriptures. But that's the scripture that brings judgment. When they say here, okay, that we are we're not we're gonna escape that. No, no, you're not. But God's word is gonna find you out. 
God's word is going to come to pass. He said God is not a man that he should lie. Shall he say something and not perform it? That's a lie. He began to say, For I will restore health unto thee. He's talking to Jerusalem. I will heal thee with from thy wounds, saith the Lord, because, because they call thee an outcast. Doesn't the world call Israel an outcast? Don't they call black people outcasts? You know, when the world thinks I can do anything to certain people and it doesn't matter, but the word don't lie. Whatsoever you sow, he said here, I'm going to do the same thing to you. That's God's word. For I will restore health unto thee and I will heal thee of thy wounds, saith the Lord, because they call thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion whom no man seeketh after. Not so. Even in the last day, they're going to come up against Zion. They're going to come up against the church. They're going to come up against the, the children of, of, of righteousness, the children of God. But in the end, God has already determined. Thus said the Lord, Behold, I will bring again the captivity of Jacob's tents and have mercy on his dwelling places, and the city shall be built upon her own heap. And the palace shall remain after the manner thereof, and out of them shall proceed thanksgivings and voices and bacon merry, and I will multiply them, and they shall not be few. Hallelujah. And I will also glorify them, and they shall not be small. God is going to bring back all that Israel has lost, all that Zion has lost. Hallelujah. He is going to bring it back. But Remember now, when he's talking about he's going to bring it upon the nations that scattered, the nations that preyed upon, the nation, people who pray upon other people. Listen, it's a serious time. We're going back to Zechariah. Zechariah, the first chapter. When they asked the question, verse 12, O Lord, how long? And, and begin to say, and the Lord answered and said, Hallelujah. The angel that talked with me, had good words and comfort words. And we just read in the comfort words. He began to tell them in Jeremiah, comfort my people. Comfort them. Comfort them because I am going to restore them and I am going to replenish them. All that the locusts have eaten up, all that the pommel worm eat, all that the canker worm. Don't worry, I'm getting ready to restore them. My people. Because I intended to chastise them for a little. But what did the enemy do? He made it even so. Let's go on and say, and the Lord answered and talked with me these words of good, good words and comfort. And so the angel that commanded me said, cry thou, saying, thus says the Lord of hosts, I am jealous for Jerusalem and for Zion with a great jealousy. I am very sore displeased with the heathens. Hallelujah. They are at ease. For I was but a little displeased with Israel, and they helped forward the affliction. I was chastising my children, but they, went, they, they took it to the extreme. Therefore, thus says the Lord, I am returned to Jerusalem with mercies. My house shall be built in it, says the Lord of hosts, and a line shall be stretched forth upon Jerusalem. Cry yet, saying, thus says the Lord of hosts, my cities uh, through prosperity shall yet be spread abroad, and the Lord shall yet comfort Zion, and yet shall choose Jerusalem. Then I lifted up my eyes and saw, behold, four horns. Now the four horns is talking about, now this is a vision that he's seeing. It says, and I said unto the angel that talked with me, what be these? And he answered and said, these are the four horns which scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. These four horns is Babylon, the Medes and the Persians, the Greeks, and the Romans. Hallelujah. Those are the four horns, and they described in Daniel. Daniel, the second chapter, verses 36 to 40 something, talks about the four. That is the Gentile nation. Why do you think God portrayed it as a man? The head of gold. And then the silver, and then the bronze, and then the brass, and down to the ends of the of the of the feet. This is where we are right now. And it talks about the stone youth out the mountain coming and smiting the ten toes, and the all thing, all of them come down. Hallelujah, Hallelujah! They all come down. It says the Lord showed me then four carpenters. 
Now, in this book here, it says the carpenters, they, they're not sure. But in my search of the scriptures, so there's a, there's a little question about who these carpenters, because the carpenters are coming, it says verse, it says, and then said I, what come these to do? These carpenters are come. He said, uh, these are the horns which scattered Jerusalem. So the horns came, and so that no man did lift up his head. But these are come to fray them, to cast out the horns of the Gentiles. The, the, the carpenters are coming to fray, or to, the word fray means to make afraid and cause to tremble. Now, I'm, in all the searches of the scriptures, those four carpenters talks about, in Revelation, the lion, the ox, the man, and the eagle. Those are, when you see the, 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 the four-headed beast, well, the four-headed creature, I won't say beast, because it's the creature, and he has four heads. He And he is a, a, a symbol of Christ in four different uh, ways. Christ as the lion, Christ as the well, the lion meaning the king. How are you able to the, the Christ as the ox meaning the burden bearer. Christ as the man is the kinsman redeemer. And as the eagle, the one that soars above everything. So the gospel of Christ portrays Christ, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, portrays him, each one of them portrays him either Matthew as the lion, Mark as the ox, when you read ox, he's the burden bearer. Hallelujah. We have Luke as the man because he's the kinsman. He's the redeemer. Luke being a physician himself. How could, and then we have John. He revealed him as the eagle. All of this study is done in Revelation, done in Daniel. But God said that when those four uh, carpenters come, they will fray the Gentile nations. Fray means to make, so that's why the word, when he said, you think that I come to bring peace? Jesus said, no, I came to bring a sword. I came to bring, I came to bring the vision. Hallelujah. When the word of God became flesh, and we see him as the king, the ox, the man, and the eagle. He came to uproot, he came to fray the nations. And the word of God is in the world today. And it says, they said, show us the kingdom of God. He said, it doesn't come with observation. God, even now, he said, since the time of John the Baptist, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it back by force. God is working. God is working. God is moving in the nations. And we don't, don't understand it unless we get into the word. We get into the word, and the word get into us. He began to say, hallelujah, that the, the, the carpenters are coming to fray, to make afraid. That goes back to Jeremiah 7. Hallelujah. 7th chapter, Jeremiah the 7th chapter. We're going to read a little bit of that, and then we're going to close out because it's getting a little bit long. So we pray that you understand. I'm going to read this scripture. It says here, Zer while I'm going to Jeremiah. Isaiah 43, verse 18. It says, Remember not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth, shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. God is doing a new thing. When Christ, the word, became flesh, and those of the king, the, uh, the lion, the ox, the man, and the eagle, which is the gospel, which is Christ, revealed in four different ways. Hallelujah. Came upon the earth. He is that stone, you out the mountain, smiting, because it's the word of God coming out of the mouth of God that will uproot and will take and destroy the Gentile nations. God is working by his spirit. Remember what he said, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And the spirit of God, 
Hallelujah, which is the word of God. The spirit of the Lord, which is the word of God. So we turn in to Jeremiah 7, verses 32. Hallelujah, and 33. And it says, Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, it shall no more be called Tophet, nor the valley of the son of Hannah, but the valley of slaughter. For they shall bury in Tophet till there be no place. And the carcass, hallelujah, of this people shall be meat for the fowls of the heaven and for the beasts of the earth, and none shall fray them away. Then will I cause to cease from the city of Judah and from the streets of Jerusalem the voice of myrrh, the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom. Then shall I cause to cease and the, bride, and the voice of the bride, for the land shall be desolate. So when we see them fighting for Jerusalem now, all the nations, in fact, the scriptures say all the nations will be coming up against Israel. But God is going to do something. They may be rejoicing. They may be having uh, marrying and giving in marriage. As Matthew said, marry and giving in marriage. They knew not until the time, hallelujah, as they did in the time of Noah. They didn't even know to the time that God shut up the ark. All of this stuff that's going on, God is beginning to deal with the nations. He is beginning to deal with the nations. Hallelujah. And when you look at this word, he says, surely, Isaiah 66, verse 9, shall I bring to birth and not cause to bring forth, says the Lord of hosts, shall I cause to bring forth and shut up the womb, says the Lord. I said that they will come forth. I said I will restore Israel. I will restore Jerusalem. I will replenish horrible Sunday. Shall I say it and bring them to the birthing chamber and not let it come forth? God is not a man that he shall lie, neither the son of man that he shall repent. God is doing a new thing in the earth, people of God. God is doing a new thing. It doesn't look like it. And all of these, if we're going to escape the uh, detestable things, the indignation, the things that God has, we have to be born again. Hallelujah. Intercede for your children and your children's children. Fathers, these are your seeds. You have to cry out to God to spare your children because the word is already out there. The, the curse is already on them. By God, hallelujah. And it's time for us, not just the mothers, Mothers is crying out all the time. Fathers need to cry out for their own seed. And if you are a child and your parent don't cry out for you, the Bible said, whosoever will, let him come. Let him come freely. God said, whosoever will, shall call upon the name of the Lord. So if your parents are not doing, you can come out from underneath the curse of them. Because in the days that we are in now, God has made a way that whosoever should call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hallelujah. You can call and ask God to deliver you from the strongholds and the generational and those ancestry curses. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, we give you glory, honor, and praise for this word. We are praying for everyone that hear this word, Lord God, that they will pray that the things that may have they may have inherited from their ancestors, Father. Hallelujah. If they come to you, Lord God, that you will in no wise cast us out. We thank and praise you that we will be made new creatures, confessing our faults, O oh God, confessing our sins, asking you to come into our heart, be the Lord over us, O oh God, be the bishop of our soul, Lord God, thanking you for your blood that was shed, denouncing every heap. We go shun the sin and every fault, Lord God, repenting, Lord God, for you to command all men everywhere to repent. I thank and praise you for loving kindness and tender mercy shown toward us, God. Have your way, Lord God. Help us, O oh God, to abide in you, to enter into your rest under the shelter of your wings, to give, O oh God, our hearts wholehearted unto you, Lord God, and not to rely on ancestry, O oh God, for those ancestors, as you said in Zechariah, where are they? Hallelujah. They too would testify that what God spoke concerning them has come to pass. As the man who went down in the hell, he said, go back and tell my brothers. 
How did they, they don't come to this place? Many of our ancestors, oh God, who left here without you, would return, would love to return to say, children, obey the voice of the Lord. Help us in this season and time and our generation to come to hear your voice and to hearken unto your word and commit ourselves into your hand and repent of our sins, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Have your way, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. In ask these and all blessings and count it done. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. As we said, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. God is being magnified, and we ought to exalt him. And this is going to be entitled, God is not a man that he should lie. God is not going to lie. He said it. He said it. Not just Israel, but every nation. Not just the children of Israel, but our own families, our generation, our ancestors. Those things that they did. Some of the seed is going to reap it. So we can come out from underneath those curses by putting our trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Accepting him as your Lord and your Savior. God loves you. And we know he loves you because he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>